with a woman. As I said, she's not in this for you. She's not doing this out of charity. She's not like, oh, there's a leader. I, I should be, have sex with him for some random reason. It's because, oh, this guy's leading me on an adventure. And when I go with him, it's more fun. It's more cozy. It's more sexy. It's more exciting for me as the woman. Yeah? Example. You have a guy and a girl chatting in a bar. And she's been standing there for 40 minutes and he's been blabbing on about how valuable he is. Yeah, because, you know, and showing how confident he is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, wriggling his Rolex occasionally just to, you know, let her know how, how much of an alpha dude he is and therefore she's going to want to have sex with him, right? And what's happening for this girl is that she's standing in this interesting construction that was developed to torture women, a high-heeled shoe. Yeah? And it makes her leg look fantastic. But she's standing on a chopstick and it's really painful. And after 40 minutes, the only thing she can think about is the fact that her legs are killing her. And no man thinks about this because we just don't wear those shoes enough, do we? <laughs> mm? So no man is aware of this. They don't care like, oh, there's no shoes and legs and tits and that. Yeah, cool. Right? A good seducer, a man who has, has even an inkling of what it might like, what it may be like to be a woman, starts to add these things up and go, that looks painful. She's been standing there for a long time. She's, she keeps shifting her weight side to side. Oh, this girl is in pain. And says to her, those shoes must be killing you. Hey, let's go sit down. Gently takes by the hand, leads her, leading. There we go, there's the leading. Sits her down on a couch, places his hand gently on her knee and says, so where were we? Good technique, that one, isn't it? Yeah. This is a man who understands the power of leading because as this woman followed the leadership request, suddenly she felt way better. She's not in pain anymore. This man gets me. Because women are constantly sourcing little bits of evidence to suggest, does this man go for what he wants and knows what he wants, but at the same time, is he balancing that with what I want? Because there's plenty of, there are plenty of men actually who are constantly trying to make sure that everything is fine for the woman. You know, these prince, nice guy, romantic hero types who are always only worried about what it is that the woman wants. That, that, can, be, that can be something that a woman will take advantage of or will, or will you know, tolerate or whatever, but after a while that gets really boring. Because having a slave, unless you're into that scene, uh, is not something that's sexy for a woman because she doesn't want to be with a guy who's constantly at her beck and call. But a man who, has, who is aware of things like, is she cold, is she in pain, is she hungry, will uh, be far more attractive. So you see in that situation, the authority to lead was developed by her taking, by him showing that, I know, where, I know what's going to be better for you in this situation. I'm going to make it happen, I'm going to make it smooth, it's going to be simple, it's going to be no fuss, you're going to like it. And then when she does, she follows through with the, re with the request, she feels better. So what do you think she's going to do next time he says, hey, should we go grab a drink at the bar? He has developed a certain amount of authority to lead here. <clears throat> she now has trust in a certain level of his leadership abilities in the sense that his ability to make her life better. So if he does that a couple of times and then says, let's get out of here. Before you, before you, you got to get, you got to get to work tomorrow. Yeah. Before you do, let's have a cup of tea at my house or whatever it is. Because each time she has to make a jump in, a, in this decision-making process to allow this to escalate or to encourage it to escalate, the risks increase for a woman. And this is another thing that we don't think about so much because we're not women. To give your phone number to, or to let a man kiss you or to go on a date with him or to get in a car with him or to go in his house. This is all potentially very dangerous stuff for women. Yeah? Mostly men are bigger, than strong, bigger and stronger. It's dangerous. So a woman is constantly looking for evidence that this man has her interest at heart. 
And if, he, if she sees that he's pushy and overbearing and trying to be leading and alphaing all the time, but doesn't hear words like no or I'm uncomfortable or can you back off or anything like that, she's simply seeing that, okay, in that situation, this is not worth the risk. This man doesn't actually give a fuck about me at all. Whereas the man who goes, here's what I want, can I have it? And then the girl, if the girl, you know, it's like a, an escalation request. A leader, a man who's leading, goes, all right, I've got to escalate. So he puts his hand on a girl's knee and he runs it up her thigh. And then she just takes it and moves it away. The guy who doesn't understand what a woman wants in that, the sense that, okay, yes, she does want a man to escalate on her physically in general if she likes the guy. But at the same time, she may feel that she needs to uh, set the pace for that, that right now she's not feeling comfortable enough with that. She will move her hand. And if the guy then respects that, steps back for a little while, continues interaction and then tries again later and sees if that dynamic has changed, which it probably will have, she's just taking note of that. Cool. Is going to escalate when needed. Is going to pull the trigger. Yes. But is willing to take, take it a little bit more at my level, at my pace. This man has authority to sexually lead me now. Does this make sense? The other, the other important thing about being with a leader is, well, essentially what's happening here is it's a, it's a really nice thing to be led sometimes, right? Like I, I run this tour several times a year where I take a bunch of guys through Eastern Europe. And there's a couple of guys who've survived that who are in this room. Um, and you look at them, they've got this special look in their eyes. Where I take a group of guys for 10 days through Eastern Europe and we go and we seduce women around the clock and go on this insane initiation into, into manhood, yeah? It's, it's, it's mental, and I'm the leader of this, yeah? And I'm a tour guide as well as being a coach, as well as dealing with the logistics of taking 12 people through a dodgy Eastern European countries, yeah? And <clears throat> the reason I have authority to do this, the reason people are willing to pay a sizable amount of money, fly to the other side of the world, rock up, uh, often when they've never met me, and go, okay, take it away, boss, is because I've developed this authority through the fact that I give speeches like that, this, through the fact that I have reviews, through the fact that I have, you know, videos of me going up to girls and staring at them and then suddenly going, here's my number. Um, but that is, of course, daily increased. If they'd rocked up and no one's there to meet them at the airport and on the first day I'm 20 minutes late and then I go, cool guys, so we're in Prague, as you know, um, so I guess we'll try and find some clubs later. Uh, that are out there. I mean, there probably is some clubs. If you guys could just chat to the girls about where the clubs are, that'd be nice. Suddenly, people get start feeling like, shit, this guy doesn't really know what he's doing. And therefore, their faith in me diminishes, and therefore, they're not going to follow my leadership requests, and we're not going to get what we need to get done. So, when I, when I come out of that, that tour, what I like to do is I like to go and visit a person that I know in another country and to have a chill out. And then I go, whatever you reckon is good to do, let's do that. And I just sit the fuck back and just get in the passenger seat and be led. Because it's a nice feeling to have somebody just take control who knows what they're doing. Everyone, I mean, we all do that in our lives. Yeah? And, we, and we seek that. And that's a big part of what a woman wants when she's with a man, is she doesn't want to have to make all these decisions. She wants a man who can make a decision and go, so, let's meet on Tuesday, and I know this great sushi place. Do you like sushi? So he checks in with her. It's not always like, it's, there's going to be sushi happening on 5 p.m. on, on <laughs> Tuesday, because that's what leaders do, and that's how they say it. The girl's like, okay. Um, there, there has to be room for the girl's opinion to be in there. Yeah, like when Irina said to this man, I don't like a restaurant. He's like, I know, what, I know what women want. They want expensive restaurants. They don't want it. Yeah? We need to be flexible. I've had that. I've, I've said, called the girl up and said, hey, I've got this great idea. I want to do this. And she's like, I actually really hate that thing. And then I've got, had to go on, all right, cool. Well, do you have an alternative? And led her to lead me. Because that's another thing a, a great leader will do. I was in Norway recently and this Norwegian girl basically picked me up and took me home, which they do over there. They're really aggressive because no man ever approaches them. 
Yeah, so just the fact that I turned and said, hello, she's like, oh my God, I might get laid. Yeah? And uh, we went back to her, her place. Pretty much the only leadership that I did then was I led from behind. I said, give me the tour, show me your room. I led her to lead me because that dealt with this awkward situation where we're sitting on a couch and we both want to have sex, but we have to get to the bedroom. Uh, what's the excuse? And so I make it easy on her. I take the pressure off and I make a pleasurable leadership request for her to lead me to the bedroom, please. Yeah? A good leader is not arrogant, is not overbearing, is flexible with the way that, they, that he leads. And remember, it's always going to be because the person who's following you is going to benefit. <clears throat> Next aspect I want to look at in terms of what is it that women want is looking at emotions. Now, we are told, we have been told that women are emotional, men are logical. Yeah? Actually, all people are emotional. We, are, we, we make the majority of our decisions completely and overall because of our emotional responses. It's very rare, it's, we actually don't sit down and logically plot out you know, the ABC benefits of something and then make a decision upon it. So in terms of buying something, choosing a flavor of something, um, deciding which way to go, um, responding to an argument, or choosing to go to bed with somebody, we don't actually sit down and plot it out logically and then go, that seems like a good idea. We have an emotional response, a feeling, that we want to do something, or we don't want to do something. Pretty much that's it. And then we may logically justify it. Yeah, like, I feel like buying this shiny toy, and then the man will be like, well, because has XYZ features, so that's a good reason why, but really I just have a feeling I need it. 